Hello chickens, and welcome back to Charlie. I'm Charlie, and if you're new here, we're pretty much all new here. We are gonna do something fun this month. This book means a lot to me for reasons that I will go into later, but as you can see, it's it's been well loved, well read, literally splitting at the seams. So we're gonna make it into a hardback. It's not an exact science, well, it doesn't look like science, but it's not an ideal transformation. Because of the way that paperback books are made, all the pages are glued to the spine as opposed to a hardback book where they are all stitched. But I've seen other people make it work, so we're gonna make it work. Which is good because I love this book and I don't want to have to throw this away and buy another one for reasons I'll go into later. The materials that I used for this project were a paperback book, PVA glue, paintbrushes, cotton, grey board, fancy pattern paper, a book press, ribbon, mull, paint and Posca paint pens. Now I already had quite a few of these materials so the grand total that this came to was a £2.85. Yeah, enough of me waffling, we're gonna go straight into it so I'll see you at the table. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna try out this two camera setup. Let's see how it goes. So I'm here, and I'm here, and a squeaky chair. Okay, so the first step is gonna be to remove the cover from the spine, which shouldn't be that hard. Have a little scalpel. Are you young fella? You were an awful storyteller. Honestly, but honestly, my every word of love was true. I saw you driving in an automobile with a beautiful blonde one day. I didn't love her, I didn't love her, believe me what I say. And then I saw you in a handsome park with a girl in so deep form. I didn't love her, wasn't even thinking of her, you're the only girl I ever gave. I'm going to keep that to help me figure out the size later, I think. Right, so I've got my two bits that have broken and a type of pages which may lose. Next is to add end papers. I have these patterned cards that I'm going to use. They don't match. I didn't have to have any two that matched. It's an old-fashioned walk and an old-fashioned talk with an old-fashioned girl someday. Let's take an old-fashioned walk. Let's have an old-fashioned talk. We will walk any place you choose to. But let's talk about the things we used to. If you want a novelty in outdoor pastime, something for the real blase. It's an old-fashioned walk And an old-fashioned talk With an old-fashioned girl someday Very carefully Cut this to size Okay, so I have the end covers now and the front and back half. Uh, next step is to try and glue these back together and put the mull over it, which is like a kind of cotton thing, and then leave it in the book press to dry and hope that it does stick together. Okay, 
So I'm gonna leave that to dry and I'll check in with it again later. Bye. Okay, welcome back. It is now day two. And I left this drying overnight, so that's where it's at. I don't know if you can see, but there's a tiny step on the one side, which is really, really annoying. Hopefully it won't have too much of an impact on the rest of it going forward though. So I'm gonna open this up, see if it's stuck. Oh, I think it's stuck. isn't that bad hopefully that will be covered by the gluing it to the book okay so the next step is going to be the mull I've never actually done this bit before but I've seen people do it and that's effectively the same thing isn't it so it just needs to cover a little bit of the spine in the middle and it strengthens it. Well, I'm saying it doesn't need to go end to end there. Ooh, look at that, it's pretty straight for me. Just cut it down because it's too long. I really hope that's right because I have no clue. <laughs> that looks right. right. So I'm just putting glue on the edge of the mole. And then I'm going to glue all across here and hope that they stick together. Okay, so now I'm going to put some glue on the spine. Oh, I shouldn't have done that all the way to the edge. That was silly. Should I rewatch some of the videos? But I watched about this before doing this bit, probably. Just making sure it has a really nice tight fit. I don't know why, if that's important, but it feels important, so we're doing it. Now I'm just gonna leave that to dry and get started on the cover. I still have this gray board which I've used a few times on the channel before. Once when I made the Hobbit book nook, and then again when I made the journal. So it's, it's lasted, it's getting my money's worth out of it. And because the cover came off in like one piece, that's really helpful because now I have the exact size I need the cover to be. Quantum maths was not my strong point. If you want something precise, don't come to me. I've picked this old pillowcase because it's kind of like book cloth because of the like weave of the fabric. You need just something a little thicker. Uh, the colour isn't what I really wanted, but I figured I could probably paint over it. So.
next step was to select a ribbon from this tangled mess of ribbons. I decided this one was quite pretty, measured it to the right length, cut it, made sure to get that in nice and crisp and neat, and then just attached it to the top of the spine. For the cover I wanted to create a stencil using my Cricut so I went to Procreate and I inserted an image I'd found on Pinterest of an interesting book cover and then just sort of traced over it and changed the elements as I needed to. As you can see on this day I was very very tired and dishevelled and did not want to film very much so. But I did make myself go out and spend some time with my favourite trees and just try and be in a better mood for the rest of the day. too big. It's too freaking big. I just tried to cut the title out on my cricket and um, it didn't really work very well. So instead I'm going to attempt to draw out the title freehand, which might go wonky. Wish me luck. So why is this book so important to me? Well, I first read The Merry Begot when I was pretending to be sick from school, and it found me on my bedside table. My sister had taken it out of the school library, and I spent pretty much that entire day just reading it. Fortunately, it's a library book, it had to go back. Uh, I tried to find it in local bookshops, but couldn't find it anywhere. I was still a kid at the time. I didn't really know much about how to search it down, so I kind of just put it to the back of my mind until one day a few years later we were on holiday and through the window of a shop I just spied this cover on the shelf. I knew instantly it was the book that I had wanted to read again for so long but the shop was shut. There was nothing we could do, we were only there for that day and I just wouldn't be able to get it. Again it was in the back of my mind, I'd forgotten about it almost entirely until I was back home from my first year at university 
Walking through the boring shopping centre, there was a stall selling cheap books, and there, for a pound, was this exact copy of the Mary Bagot. I instantly swooped it up and bought it and read it again, filled with that old nostalgia for the book. But something else was more magical about it. At the very end of the book, the main character, Nell, travels to Falmouth, which is where I was currently studying at university. I hadn't remembered the word from that all those many years ago when I'd read the book, but it was just such a weird coincidence. This book found me, and for that I have to respect it and keep it going for as long as possible. Right. 